What's up, Martin? How are you? How's your day going? What's up, Daryl? How's it going? Back working today? Picking up with you. Couldn't do yesterday. Digger Evans, what's up? What do you get? Little uh, notifications uh, on your phone, Digger, that uh, I went live. One day I'm going to shoot some video with this camera. I've had this for a couple of years. I have probably more than that. Probably five, six years. Maybe even longer than that. Don't use it much. It needs a tripod. You can't shoot with this and zoom around and... Uh, Uh, without it shaking, it's too, too sensitive, and I really don't like the audio of it. But nah, I'll try it. The video is nice, but I'll try it again. Yes, get notifications on your phone. Okay. I'm doing good. How you doing, Digger? Picked up the truck about an hour ago. Man, you're really behind. You're a day and a half behind now. You got a lot of catching up to do? You're going to have to run 24 hours a day? So is, is the shredder part of the truck does that run independent from the truck? Does it have its own motor? Hmm. You're a lot behind, huh? Too many, too many, too many. Father's Day is coming. Uh, any of you guys fathers? And then some of you are mothers. What the hell is that? No replacement gas can for me. Hmm, interesting. No shredder is of the shredder is off the diesel engine via PTO. Oh, that's interesting. What's up, Pappy? So then your truck must get a lot of, your motor must get a lot of hours on it too, aside from the driving hours. It's interesting that it's on a PTO. Hmm. So I'm curious, like, can you like just like throw big boxes of papers in there and it shreds up? Or do you got to, like, feed, like, a single box in or, like, a shoe box at a time? Or I should watch some YouTube videos on them. They interest me, things like that.
you should make a video for your company website or something. You don't have to share it with us, but I'm just saying, it'd be cool for your company. I'm sure some people are interested in how you chop things up. What's up, Pappy? What you do today? Finish your honeydew list? Mm -hmm. Yes, my eldest tried to give me money in advance for Father's Day, but I refused it. I don't need it. So him and my younger one are going to wash the car for me for Father's Day. That's nice. Cool. Working on, the on their model. Sorry if I missed some chat. Eh, that's okay. So I, I guess you opted for your model today and not your honeydew list. Paper only, no boxes. I so said, like, you just dump paper into this thing? What's up, Joy? So you just dump the paper in to this hopper, I'm guessing. Ohio Railroad Productions. What's up, my friend? How you doing? Good to see you. Only did one honeydew, so I can't say I didn't do one. I guess not. I don't think your wife's going to be mad at you. She doesn't seem like the type that would complain one way or the other. Ah, ba -ba 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 -ba. What's going on, Mr. Ohio Rail Productions? Are you chasing trains today? What's what's up? Pappy, this I think this young fellow is uh in your neck of the woods somewhere. Not really sure where. He's in Ohio. <laughs> um, hey, Daryl, when you're shredding stuff, do you wear ear protection? Not a whole lot going on today. I'm waiting for a shipment of baby chickens to arrive, as a matter of fact. They should be here tomorrow. Well, that's cool. I hope they didn't die. <laughs> I fathered a bunch of kids. I don't understand, like, what? Why? Why did that hold that? Why did YouTube hold that back? Because you fathered a bunch of kids. Is that bad? I hate YouTube. <laughs> we run into each other here and there. Well, that's cool. What's up there, Stephen? Hi there. Heidi Ho. Howdy ho, neighbor. So you got some baby chickens coming, huh? You got, are they meat birds or are they going to be layers? What kind of chickens you getting? How do you, how do you keep your chickens? You have them in like, uh, Like a chicken coop, or do you use uh, movable chicken tractors? What do you do? Got any videos about your chickens on your le on your channel? Man, I hate this slow mode crap, Jerry. Well, Pappy, blame the people that sit there and and then I can't read what they're saying. Blame those people, Pappy. I'm sorry. It's a punishment. <laughs> What's up, Chasco? How you doing? It's not that slow, Pappy. It's only 20 seconds. It lets you think about what you're saying and, and correctly fix your grammar. <laughs> Trying to say hi. To, you don't have to say hi to others. All you got to do is wave. Everybody knows you're here. We talked about this before. 
Everybody spends so much time saying hi to everybody. Talk. We all know you're here. You don't need to say hi to everybody. I know you want to. He needs time to read the messages. I do need time to read the messages. Because guys like you, Digger Evan, sit there and... And then I can't read nobody's messages. All the messages aren't for me. Ah, damn it, Pappy. Why not? Not too well here. Rolling blackouts. Almost 100 degrees. My work computer got fried from an electrical surge. Why do you have rolling blackouts there? That's crazy. What is it? California? In uh, your part of Ohio? Wow, man. You love it. No, Digger. I really don't love it, Digger, to be honest with you. To be honest with you, Digger, I don't. Because I can't read everybody's chat. Because I'm looking at a chat window this big. And it scrolls by so fast that now I got to go back and scroll back. And I don't like scrolling back. I don't want to touch my computer. So I don't like it, Digger. That's why I have it on slow mode. Man, that sucks. You got rolling blackouts. But, yeah, that's part of, you know, part of the whole new thing now. They're torturing us. It's another form of torture, Stephen. Actually, I'm home watching the Mississippi River Lock and Dam 19 on uh, Secure some cam in Iowa. <laughs> What's up, Jacob Smith? How are you? What's up, Jake? What's going on on, on the Mississippi River cam? Anything good? Power was out from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m., and then a few hours this morning, major storm took out a bunch of infrastructure. So it's putting a toll on the oh, so it wasn't just like, you know, we're gonna make you suffer like California does and because you're using too much electricity and being too comfortable in your house, so we're gonna shut your electric off. Well, nah, you know, stuff happens. You can't help it when a storm comes through. It's just part of it. That's cool, Jake. Good to hear. Well, I guess your power's back on because your computer's working. And then your computer got fried. That sucks. So what do you got to do with that? It really blows. We don't even have cell service. I missed Heath and the second section streams. Yeah, but you can go watch... Uh, you can watch it again. What's up, Mystic? How are you? True fact, the catchment area for the Mississippi River is the size of continental Europe. How about that? Um, man, you didn't really miss nothing, Stephen. That sucks on power loss. We get them all the time in Southern California. Yeah, I know. But yours are like, you know, they're not caused by storms. They're just caused by... The fact that they can't keep up with the electrical power for whatever reason. Like uh, over in New Jersey, there's a cogen plant that runs on coal in South Jersey. They're closing it down. They're going to demolish it. I don't know what we're going to do for electric now. Like, where, where, where's the electric coming from? Fairy tale dust, fairy dust, or something? I don't, I don't know. But yeah, it was my work computer. They're sending a new one since we don't have. Well, at least it's a good thing it was your work computer, right? 
<laughs> it would suck if it was your computer. Damn. It's a good thing. It will be turning off our power again for a few hours sometime this evening. Just about the time when you're ready to go to bed. <laughs> right? What's up, Bob? Uh, what's up, Mr. Plumber? Just about the time when you're ready to go to bed and you can't sleep because it's so freaking hot now. That's what they do. You know, most of you guys were in the stream earlier and you said hello to each other earlier. When you come in and out of a room, do you say hello to everybody again? Yeah, it's not rude if you don't say hello to everybody. It really isn't. I hear that wig wag. It sucks. Sure does suck. It's supposed to be hot too. Not here. Here it's not too bad, but like I see like in Ohio and Illinois, they got even other parts of the country there's uh excessive heat warnings. Typical for this time of year. But you know, the whole country's red. Highballing hugger, what's up, my friend? How's it going, Dale? Good to see you. Good work on the layout. I like your new little, uh, I like some of the things that you got. Oh, shut up, Alexa. Some of the things you got for uh, your uh, memorabilia. You got some cool stuff. Seems like they want the average man living like they were in third world country. Yeah, that's probably their plan. Yeah, quit being nice to each other, guys. Jerry finds it unacceptable. It's not the fact that it's, I don't want you to be nice to each other. It's just like, I don't know, you spend 30 minutes saying hello to each other. And like, for me, it doesn't matter because my live stream goes for a while. But if somebody's only going for an hour, you know, you spend an hour, half an hour saying hello. Um, it's not rude. So, yeah, what's up, man? It's still spring. Yeah, I mean, you know. But, you know, just because something changes on the calendar doesn't mean the weather follows that. The weather does what it wants to do. It doesn't matter if it's winter. It can still be 70 degrees out. <laughs> doesn't matter if it's summer. It can still be 40 degrees out. <laughs> Relaxing with a cold one. Cold beer or a cold glass of sweet tea. What's the train picture behind you? Um, it's uh, Pennsylvania Railroad Shark. I think. I forget. Yeah, it's a shark. I had to look. <laughs> I'm not watching myself. I'm watching uh, the Waycross uh, stream. Virtual Ralph fan. And RF-16, BF-22, I don't know. Dale, what is that thing called? They call it so many names. I think on there they call it something else. I don't think they call it an RF-16. Beer. It's Beer 30. So, Dale, you got a new puppy? Forgot to ask you that in your video.
That's what I'm talking about, Dale. Hmm. Generator time. Did you lose power, Mr. Plumber? Yeah. Steven, you need a generator. I'm surprised you don't have a generator, Steven. Steven Wigwag, not Steven Plumber. <laughs> yeah, Piglet Olive. I'm ready for another train show. Well, pretty soon you're going to have one in October. You go up to Maryland, to Timonium. How far would that be for you? Timonium, Maryland. Probably pretty far, huh? I do agree with you on the high things, Jerry, but there have been many in chat that keep saying hi till you do, and they do that. They do get it. No, I, I don't think they get offended, Pappy. I think they're just ball breakers, like Digger. <laughs> Digger's just breaking your balls until you, until you say something to him because he does it all the time. I just ignore him. I don't think they get offended. And if they do, too bad. Grow thicker skin. Don't be a snowflake. The world's got enough of them. We don't need them here, too. Yep, just say hello every once, everyone once only. <laughs> Shut up, Digger. You're starting to get on my nerves now. <laughs> I have power. Our club is setting up in Timonium. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. So we'll probably see you at Timonium. Are you think you're going to go to Timonium? There's supposed to be a YouTube meet and greet at uh, Timonium Train Show in October. I think it's going to be on Saturday. I'm trying to do Timonium next time around. That's cool. It's no shame in getting a wheelchair, man, to cart yourself around in. It's only for a day. You know what I mean? <laughs> we have a generator, but it's a small one. In the past 12 years here, we only lost power a few hours. Our power lines are underground. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that helps. But, hey, you see what, what happens. You know, you lose power at the substation or, you know, from... Wherever it's connecting above ground to below ground, it can still happen. Look what happened to you now. Good thing it's not too, too hot. <laughs> I do, I admit, I do that too, Jerry, to other people's live streams because I know Jerry hates it. See, Pappy, he does it just to break your stones. Just to be annoying. Just to be like a little six-year-old It's just bugging the crap out of you. What's up, late night Joey? How you doing? I can't wait for Timonium. Um, I can and I can't. doesn't matter to me. <laughs> I admit I do that. Yeah, said that. Okay. Our F-16s were called BF-16s. So that's what I think uh, they call this on under the description of this photo a BF-16. So I wonder why Pennsylvania Railroad called them BF-16s and not RF-16. That's like everything else. Everybody's got to be different. CSX does it. NS does it. I'm going to be setting up the club layout. I should be there. The home weekend, then we'll be able to find me. That's cool. I won't know what you look like, but I'll find you. Well, you know what you know. You know what I look like. So, if you see me, say something. Uh, oh, it's really hot. Didn't even get this hot normally in the peak of summer. Yeah, I know what you mean, but could be worse. Could be even hotter. Just got done with today's work. Need to pick up a car from dealership. Had some maintenance done. Baldwin Freight. Oh, is that what the BF? So, what does RF mean? Road Freight? Uh, 
Oh, that's interesting. See, I knew you would know, Dale, because you're Mr. Pennsylvania Railroad. I wish they would just give them names like cars. I would be able to remember the model best. Really? You just got to keep going over it in your head. Happy, there's not that many, so it's pretty easy. Just EMD and uh, GE. <laughs> That's it. Where is Timonium going to be? Maryland. Maryland. Timonium, Maryland. Pretty far for you, Daryl. <laughs> yeah, yell the plumber. Plumber! This is the fairgrounds of Timonium, yep. Yeah. The cow palace. <laughs> it's where they have the farm show. <laughs> and they parade cows through. So we might step in cow shed or horse shed or something. RF was Baldwin's designation for road freight. Gotcha. It's been very lovely warm day today. 24 Celsius all day. I spent ages in the layout shed. Ages? <laughs> did you get anything done in there? Relax. What did you do in the shed? Never could remember what they are. Been staring at them for 50 years and I can't tell you what it is when it goes by. Uh, what's up? Way far? Thanks, Jerry. Yep. Way far. How far? Yeah, it's a little far. You know, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you need uh, maybe you need little uh, flashcards, Pappy. At night, you can go over flashcards. You and the missus, she could test you. Did a lot of running of locos. Every loco got to run out. I don't know. I did a little more detail work on the layout, too. Very good. Did you clear some more space for buildings? Because, you know, you don't have enough of them. You need a few more. To cut down some trees. To put some more buildings up. Yeah, I think that's what you need, Pappy. Some flashcards. Anyone heard from Rob Y and I see him every once in a while on some people's live streams. Um, other than that, no, not really. He doesn't show up uh, regularly like he used to. Don't even see many. Uh, I see him comment in some people's videos, not everybody's, but you know, no, I'm sure he's okay somewhere out there. Not that pressed. It's a diesel or a steamer. Does it look good? Yep. It is cool. Yep. That's all that matters. Yeah, that's all that matters. I have a plan to extend the layout so. I fill it with more buildings. There's only a few trees left on there now. Might as well cut them down and put some buildings in its place. Yeah, I don't know what's up with Rob. Maybe he doesn't like us anymore, Dale. Maybe he's got a new girlfriend or something. Or a new hobby. Do you see comments from them on your on your videos? I bet you if you changed your radio station that you'd be listening to, you might comment. 
I haven't seen him in a while, not even on Facebook. Yeah, I don't see a lot of people on Facebook. Yes, may as well be rid of the few. <laughs> Might as well. What's the point? One or two doesn't make a village. Nobody will miss them. Be less leaves to clean up. So Daryl's at home today. I thought you'd be driving around, shredding the world. Peppy, you're doing a lot of chatting. You're not working on that model. How's that model coming along anyway? You almost done? Oh, but yeah, that's about it. That's all I got. If you look at the layout like the city edge where Franklin and South Manchester, trees have a minimum role to play. I even have trees in my neighborhood, Digger. <laughs> every, every little neighborhood has trees. They plant trees in the city. I wish I had time to work on some of my layout right now. It's just too hot up in the train room. But yeah, especially if it's like in an attic and you don't have the windows. Yeah, it's what winter time's for. This time of year, if you can, it's nice just to go outside and do stuff. How many chickens you got coming? Ohio Railroad Production. But do you have trees on your layout, Jerry? I will, Digger. I'm not going to have a ton of them just because my layout is more like an industrial park, not a, not a, um, you know, it's just an industrial park. I'm going to have trees, but nice trees, not like normal trees, decorative trees. So, yeah, I'll probably have more trees than you on my little layout, Digger. Not in the desert. Maybe a little Joshua trees. Yeah. I love 24 Celsius. It's 37 Celsius here. I don't know how hot that is. Alexa, what's 37 Celsius? 37 degrees Celsius is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. 98, huh? Nah, it's not that bad, Mark. Put a couple ice cubes in your pocket. You'll be okay. Sit in front of the fan, man. <laughs> See, Digger thinks that's nice. He probably would <laughs> trade with you. About 25 chickens have probably spent their first two months inside small enclosure in the garage and once they're old enough I'll move them out into the coop. So are they going to be uh, layers or you're going to eat them eventually? What's your plan with your chickens? I'm surprised you can still get chickens now this time of year. Maybe you can get them all the time. But, like, I watch a couple of uh, YouTube channels. They're, like, farming channels. And uh, they got all their chickens, like, back in March. But they're, like, mostly, like, meat birds they raise for selling. All layers. But a couple of them can also be used for show chickens. As show chickens? Damn. That's fancy. I want eggs or I want to eat them, one or the other. Enjoy raising chickens as they are very entertaining with their antics. Yeah, I bet you they are. So they're always doing something stupid. You got some chickens, Palmer? 
I keep telling Pappy he needs to get some chickens down there, but nope. He don't listen to me. He'd be going in his backyard every day and getting fresh eggs. Is free range. Is free range? I don't know. Is that what you got? Free range? Or or his free range? I know you're speaking in your phone. Phone ring. I miss you. What I miss? I said uh, we're talking about Ohio's railroads waiting for his chickens to come. And I said, I keep telling Pappy he needs to get some chickens so he can get some fresh eggs and every once in a while kill a chicken. What's up, Kyle Stevens? No Chick fil A here, just KO. Well, you know what that means, Daryl? You got to buy your own chickens and raise your own chickens. And you can have derail filet, Chick fil A. You could have Daryl Chick Fil A. I don't know. I can't come up with a name. My chickens spend most of their time inside the coop, but they're let out at least once a day or so. They can roam around. Wow, you let them roam around that far? Is it fenced in? My neighbor has it. I'll just eat his. Okay. You enjoy the 614? Yeah, that was a pretty good video, Kyle. I liked it. That was pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, how do you keep them in? How do you keep them from, like, how do, you, how do they come back when they got that much room to roam around? Derail boxcar I did until Christmas. The raccoons figured out how to open two latches and get into the coop. Damn those raccoons. Well, you know what you got to do with them raccoons, plumber? You got to kill them. So they don't get in there and eat your chickens. It's not fenced in, but as long as I keep an eye on them. And keep a little food in a bucket. And shake. Oh, okay. Yeah, still, man. What's up, Jason Train Freak? Man, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't like that plan, Mr. Ohio. Railroad Productions. <laughs> That's too much work. <laughs> Trying to plan a trip back to Altoona and Harrisburg next year. If I can make it to Philly, you going to take me out? Yeah, Dale. There's no good trains here, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let me know, Dale. Maybe I'll come out to Ohio with you because, I mean, Harrisburg. Because there's more trains out there than here. Philly sucks for trains, Dale. We never had a single break into our chickens by raccoons. You don't have raccoons, Digger. That's why. It's a good thing you don't. <sighs> we figure it out now that we have a lot of predators in my neighborhood. Yeah, now you got raccoons. You got some places have coyotes, fox. A lot of predators out there, man. You got to protect your chickens. I have a friend with a pet raccoon. Yeah, I know people with pet raccoons, too. They're okay if you raise them from a baby. We don't have them. That's why they. That's why they don't break in. Yeah, watch out, those killer hedgehogs. You got hedgehogs, Digger. We had an issue with a mink getting into our coop and killing off our chickens. I'm currently installing an underground fence to prevent digging in. Yeah, I've seen some people like they'll. Um, on the coop, like they'll dig down and put 
um, like metal, um, corrugated metal down in the ground where they'll take their fence, like their chicken wire, and bury it in the ground like six or seven inches to keep anything from digging under. I've seen that done. Got to protect those chickens, man. We have coons, coyotes, foxes, chicken snakes. Chicken snakes? What's a chicken snake? Well, we left for Christmas. I'm not sure both of those latches were put. Yeah, maybe they forgot to close the latches, Blummer. Don't worry about my koi fish being eaten. I have furious dogs that I do not socialize. <laughs> yeah. Do you have like a fence up? Like one of those bird nettings on your for your koi fish? Why did you turn slow mode on? Because guys like Digger Evans like to make the chat go by too fast and, and I can't read the chat. It slows down the chat. You tell them, Jason. Get them. Oh, <laughs> you can tell me. <laughs> you know where it's going, right? <laughs> it's an old codger. He needs time to read the chat. Yeah, stop making Jerry where he can't read the chat. <sighs> Freak, he can't stay caught up on reading what everybody is saying about him. Yeah, I guess not. What's up, Rick RNL Railroad? How are you, my friend? How's it going? What I'm using is galvanized rabbit wire, but it's buried down almost two feet. Yeah, that should work. Two feet, that's pretty far. I don't think any critter is going to dig two feet. Time's got to be really rough. No fence or nothing for my koi pond. But what about the birds? Like, do you, do you guys have, like, herons? Like, my friend, he lives, uh, he's got a koi pond. He has to put up a net because he's had, like, blue herons or herons, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, come to his pond and try to get his fish. Um, We have a lot of blue herons around here, Daryl. Yeah, yeah. You got to keep your keep your uh, koi pond covered up, man. Those herons will snatch them up, man. Snatch up your thousand dollar fish. Well, then Jerry has to wait a minute for me to respond to his question. Well, see, you just wasted your post right there. See, this 20-minute, this 20-second thing makes you think more about what you're going to post. You're going to post meaningful posts every time you, you type, not stupid stuff like Digger does. See, like that stupid question here. Yeah, he likes to fire questions out but can't handle the answers. See what I mean? He wasted his 20 seconds with that. Now he's got to wait 20 more seconds to say something else. Real good. Took the wife to Fastoria today and did some train hunt on our 31st year. Hey, happy anniversary, Mr. Rick. 31 years. That's a long time. Good for you. Enjoy your, uh, enjoy your evening out. It's nice that you got to talk her into going for to Fastoria. <laughs> at least, at least you uh, got some trains in. Does she know your alternative uh, reasoning for going there? It's my twenty seconds to waste. It surely is, Digger. Wasted as you see fit. But what happens if my response is more than two hundred characters? And I'm limited to. That means my continuing response comes 20 seconds later. And someone else will distract your thought process. It could happen. It's the chance you take. It's like 
the chance to take walking out the door, getting in your car, going to work, driving down the highway. It's a chance to take, man. Correct. Do all dogs want to devour anything in or crawling in? What kind of dogs you got there, Daryl? <laughs> How come they didn't get your fish yet? Yes, yeah, she likes trains. And this one got me into it. And that's cool. <laughs> then it's a win-win. Sounds like a good time then, Rick. For Storios, it looks like a good spot. I watched a virtual rail cam there. Looks pretty good. Becoming a sadist like Heath. Heath is a sadist. There's a chance Jerry is prepared to take. He likes to live on the edge. Are the dogs able to freely go in and out? Seen five trains in 30 minutes. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's more than I see here in Philadelphia area. <laughs> I'm lucky if I can see five trains all day, let alone 30 minutes. CSX moves slow through Pistoria. Well, that's a good thing, too, maybe. So the trains take longer. My old house, the dog could go in and out or the coot was freely new house dog can I yep. I wasn't aware of that about Heath. <laughs> coop. I think he means coop, like chicken coop, not a co op. <laughs> He's talking into his phone. It's one of the problems with talking into your phone. Sometimes it doesn't understand your accent. If you don't enunciate right. Co-op is where I buy my farm supplies. Or it's where you buy your vegetables or something. Farmer co-ops, you know. Buy vegetables. Things like that. Yeah. Voice to text. I knew what you meant, Farmer. You didn't have to correct it. It's just Jason wasting his 20 seconds with stuff. <laughs> That's all. I don't have a farm. Well, I know you don't have a farm, but, you know, you can go there and buy vegetables. You don't know Heath was a sadist, Terry? No. Huh? Never knew that. It's weird. Dogs bark at the koi, but will not get in the water. Are they labs? I thought your dog was a lab. Daryl. Dear old Daryl, I thought you had Labrador retrievers. They retrieve. It's funny, Daryl. My dogs will go swimming, but hate, hate a bath. Yeah, what's up with that, man? Why did some dogs... They, they love the water, but they hate baths. Just don't want to get wet, I guess, like some kids. I can I confirm Kyle's statement? Uh, I don't believe either one of these. <laughs> Go figure, Mr. Plumber. I don't know. One of these days, Daryl, one of them dogs is going to bring one of your coys into you, and you're going to be mighty mad. Ooh, there's a whole truck of trees going by. Cut up trees, that is. My dogs love a bath, but scared to get in the lake, especially when the weight's yeah, I can understand that, kind of. Maybe they don't like the fact that they can't touch the bottom. I don't know. Well, he's also a masochist, because once I got on his stream, I caused him grief. Why he calls him grief, Kyle? Kyle, 
God's cause and grief. The exact opposite of mine, train freak. See, Jason knows. Man, I don't know. Trust either one of you. Keep up the great work, buddy. <laughs> Everyone keeps Heath a hard time. Yeah, I don't understand why everybody picks on Heath. I don't understand that. You know, one of these days he's going to come and kick all your asses. That's what happens. One of these days he's going to go postal on you. You know, you keep pushing him, pushing him. One day he's going to come in with his AR-15 and shoot up the whole place. Don't say I didn't tell you. Me, I'll just be standing by watching. I think you're going to be his first victim, Digger. Keith loves to give me grief, and the grief he gives doesn't even affect me. <laughs> Monty, I have to fight to get him in the bath, but if it's a monsoon outside, he wants to go out in it. That's crazy. Why? wonder why. Is it like the fact that they're like in the tub and water? Or, man, that's crazy. Maybe he needs to go see a dog psychologist, Dale. Daryl, what happened? I, I couldn't read that. You, you retracted it too fast. Keith has a machine gun. Maybe he does. Jason, I'm going to go for as long as I can. Good luck. Yeah, for my horrible enunciation. <laughs> Could be. It's just it's your accent. Yeah, I can't help it. Sometimes it just messes things up. If you really want to give Heath, Heath grief, tell him you like Atlas Rail Joiners over Pico. Really? <laughs> What's the problem with uh, either one of them? Aren't they like both the same or just rail joiners? Just ask him about his career in the movies. Uh, don't start now, Digger. Just don't start. Don't make me time you out. Looks like I got something to say when he goes live. Uh, he prefers Pico. I prefer Atlas. Well, what's the difference? They're just rail joiners. Like, is one better than the other? The one night on Who's Big Bill Talking to Bill had a professional layout builder, and Heath asked, which rail joiners? And the guy said Atlas. I don't know, to me, they're just rail joiners. Rail joiners don't work on Pico turnouts. I don't know why. Why won't they? Pico joiners here, tight, just like my women. <laughs> I mean, I, I use Pico joiners only because they have Pico track and Yankee Dabbler I don't I guess they have Atlas joiners but you know I'm just right there picking that Pico track so there's the Pico joiners I pick them up and uh, I walk out the door I'm sure if you just crimp the Atlas ones, they'll be tight, just like your women, Daryl. Oh, 
honestly, yeah. Is there really a difference? I'm still used to Bachman's excellent track. I don't know. It's a rail joiner. It's not like, you know, it's track. I mean, there's a difference in a track. Yeah, it's just a rail joiner. You can make them tight if you want to make them tight. Just crimp them down. I don't know. Do your women know you like them tight, Daryl? <laughs> no, that's okay. I don't really know. I'll have to say that on Heath's next stream. <laughs> yeah, stir the pot. You guys like to stir the pot, don't you? Some of the track thickness from side to side is different. And some of the rail joiners doesn't work as well on some tracks as others. Well, like, I mean, you know, to me, like, if I have Pico track, I'm going to buy Pico joiners. If I have Atlas track, I'm going to buy Atlas joiners. Usually. Yeah, pretty much. I'm different. I like guard graves. <laughs> it's because you're a nose scaler, aren't you? That's why I'm confused. I just like flex track. I feel like all flex track is the same except for the codes. See, that's where you're totally wrong, Kyle Stevens. Totally wrong. Not all flex track is created equal. Atlas flex track is different than Pico track flex track. And micro uh, engineering flex track is way different than them all. That's where you're wrong, Kyle. You're wrong, Kyle. My wife is listening. She's right next to me. I'm surprised she doesn't kick you. But you get like our engineering rail joiners. I wish you the best of luck. Connect. Yeah, you're not connecting them because they're totally different. Like micro engineering in N scale, Co55 is truly Co55. Where Pico's Co55 is dual. It's like Code 80, Co55. Totally different. Totally different. Like you bend microengineering flex track, it keeps its shape. I've done it. Bent it, left it, and it stayed exactly the same way I bent it. You bend Pico, you bend Atlas, it doesn't stay its, its shape. Pico stays better than Atlas, but Micro engineering flex track is uh, it's a world of difference, man. I wish I like I couldn't get, and people say you can mess with it. And I I didn't want to mess with it. I was going to use micro engineering flex track with Pico uh, turnouts. They were a pain in the butt to use them. I didn't want to deal with it, so. I wound up using Pico Flex Track. I'm happy with it, but I would have rather have used uh, Micro Engineering Flex Track. The ties are smaller. The track is smaller. Looks more, I don't want to say it looks more real, but it does. Not that it really matters when it's that small. Yeah, I'm on Pico too, Daryl. Well, hell, the hell am I supposed to know? I've been stuck on sectional track for. You just ask people, Kyle. Now you just learned. The pappy, what the pappy say? So who's who has better flex track? I just told you. Well, for N scale, like our engineering. That's just my opinion, and that's solely based on its ability to stay in whatever shape you put it in. And not have to fuss with it. Is the Bex flex? Is the best flex track? Is the cheapest flex track? As long as it's not steel or brass. Well, Pico and and Micro Engineering are the same cost. I don't know about Atlas. They're the same price. 
has its perks, and so does the flex track. Yeah, you're right. Sectional track, there's nothing wrong with sectional track. Thanks, train freak. I'll not buy that box of joiners. Such a thing, and I've been in the hobby stores. What did he say? Oh, yeah, I don't know what would N scale joiners even fit on HO track. I can't imagine they would. Code 100 Pico isn't rated at HO but at double O gauge, so I prefer Atlas code 83. Pico, hands down. You confused me there. Code 83 Pico, hands down. Uh, is that what you want? Well, I will ask everything once I can get... Yep, that's the best thing. That's what I did. I asked before I started my layout what people like for track, for turnouts, and a lot of people said Atlas, and yeah, I made up my own mind. Went and seen what I was out there and figured it out. Hey, is micro engineering still in business? I don't know. Didn't they close up or something? And they were looking to retire, and somebody was hoping to buy them out. I can't remember. Something like that. Do, 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 do. What's the difference in track code? Never got that. Um, track code thicker, like 55 is tiny, 100 is bigger. The height of the rail. So the smaller the number, the smaller the, the height. Lar larger the number, the bigger the height. What's up, trackside Mike? Pico code 100 versus the rail is the same height, but Pico ties are thicker. Yeah, so like, yeah, that's the thing. Like, like I said, if you get Pico code 55 and microengineering code 55, they're both code 55, but microengineering code 55 is really a true code 55, where Pico isn't. It's kind of like I said before, it's like. A dual code 80, code 55. It fits both. And the rail is a little taller, um, way different. If you cut a section off of the rail and look at the end of the rail, it's way different than regular rail. And the ties are bigger. Hot enough for everyone? No, it's okay here. <laughs> is it hot where you are, trackside money? This is why I do not mix a match track. Yeah. Yeah. See, and I, and nobody told me, right? So nobody told me about microengineering and Pico track. Like the dude at the train store, he didn't say, you know, you might have a problem hooking these two up together. You might have to do something special. Didn't say nothing. It wasn't until I started putting stuff down that I figured, this ain't working. <laughs> and it wasn't working. So. <laughs> yeah. You just, it's, sometimes it's just better to keep it all the same. In my opinion. Keep in mind, Pico is a UK company which produced, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's the thing with it. Hot as hell here, Mike. But it's always hot as hell there, Kyle. It's nothing new. It's hot as hell where Jason is, too, probably. Knew the rail height, but did not know the ties were different thicknesses. Yeah, I mean, like, you could see it if they're side by side. Definitely with the microengineering and Pico in N scale. I don't know about HO. But definitely, you can see the difference in 
today I live in Arkansas. Carol Pico makes some turnouts that Atlas doesn't and vice versa. I hear you, Kyle, man. What's your summer going to be like? I'm sure I'm used to minus 10. <laughs> it's going to be hot. That's what it's going to be like. Hot and muggy. So it's like down there. It's part of the territory, man. Let's see what the temperature is in. Like right now, it's 92 in New Orleans. It's, wow, it's 98 in Cordell, Georgia. That's nasty. It's 90 degrees in Gulfport, Mississippi. Feels like 102. That's pretty impressive. You get high humidity. Yeah, the humidity sucks. The humidity is what really is the nasty factor. Because it could be 70 out and be humid and still be crappy. Nice and cool. 94 here today. Where, where are you located, Rick? Around the upper 80s to lower 100s, which feels like 105. Yeah. Yeah, it's that humidity, man. The humidity and the dew point. It's uh, 85 here. And the humidity is low. So when your humidity and your dew point are high, that's the bad thing. Like right now. Like in New Orleans, it's 92, but feels like 98. So the dew point's high. But yeah, what are you going to do? Here in the San Gabriel Valley, it's 92. Do you have humidity there, Daryl? Is it humid? Man, I can go to Vegas 110. No biggie. Is it... Is it because it's not humid in Vegas? I don't know. Never been to Vegas. 93 degrees in Arkansas feels like 104. wonder what your dew point is. What's your dew point? Your dew point's probably like 60-some percent. Dry heat. Yeah, humidity is relatively low today due to the higher winds. 50%, 53% humidity. What's your dew point, though? 73, 73 is oppressive. 73 is high, man. I think they say once it gets into the 60s, it's bad. And if your dew point is higher than your humidity, it's nasty. Yeah, dew point is what counts, man. Everybody thinks it's humidity. Well, it is. But when the when the dew point's high, it's really bad. Yeah, seventy three percent, man. That's bad, man. That's that's why it's so nasty out. Even though your humidity is low, kind of low. Fifty three is not. I mean, fifty three is better than ninety. I'm no meteorologist. Well, probably do a better job than them. Michigan. Oh, you're in Michigan, huh? So it's a, does it get uh, hot and humid there in the summertime in Michigan? I guess it depends where you are, right? Monday, humidity was in the 70s and dew point was 80. Oh, man, that's nasty. Man, that had to be horrible, man. What's up, Jeffrey? You desert drillers are unique. I sweat in the heat no matter what. <laughs> man, that must have been nasty, Jason. Dang, man.
Curb the Weather Channel. Yeah, man, that's that's pretty bad. It's 95, 65, and 76 percent dew point. Yeah, that's pretty bad too, Wigwag. That's stuff where you need air condition for that. Like you can't. There's no way you can sit in a house and be comfortable with no air conditioning in that type of temperatures. When temperature equals dew point, humidity is a hundred percent. Hmm. Everybody watch that Reed Timber channel on YouTube. Nope. What is it? I hate the humidity and hot heat. <laughs> Oh, in southeast Michigan, the humidity gets high and dew point gets high also. Yeah, so it gets crappy there, too. The six hours, yeah, I can't ima I can imagine what it was like. I would have been miserable. I don't know how anybody could have slept. Well, you know what they say. The hardest day of your life was yesterday. That's the case every time. The hardest day of your life was yesterday. Got to get a big generator, wig wang. But people did it all the time back in the day with no AC. Yeah, maybe it wasn't as hot back then. I don't know what to tell you. You know, with all this global warming going on. I don't know. Reed Timmer. I don't know. Yeah, he is a tornado chaser. I met him in person back when he was on the Discovery Channel. Huh, is that is that who you're talking about, Mr. Palmer? Is that who? I work in a factory. It gets like a sauna in there. It sounds like somebody else on the house. <laughs> That's really cool, train freak. Oh... I like putting my GoPro on my truck and driving in storms. You do that, man? You make videos of that and publish them? That would be pretty cool. Same here, Rick. It sucks. That's what Pappy says. Norman Rose says they sat on big blocks of ice, Pappy. That's what they did back then. The hard hey, Norman, what's up? The hardest day of our lives is working outside in heat and humidity. No, uh, maybe. Reed lives around Stillwater, Oklahoma, but they drive all over the country. Yeah, those tornado chasers, they're pretty, you know, some, that's pretty cool. It's interesting. As a plumber, the hardest day you're digging ditches in the sun. Yeah, no doubt about it. Sorry on the phone. Okay. Back in the day, we used to get snow all the time. Now we don't get anything harder, hardly in the winter. Hmm. It's interesting. It's global warming, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's another load of timber going by. Wow, this chat is making me all hot and sweaty. Yeah. Sit on a block of ice, Norman. You'll be okay. We got slammed with snow last year. You got slammed with snow? Like one inch is slammed for you, Jason. Come on now. Be serious. Would you want to catch a tornado? No, not really. But they like chasing them now. Is that the same as a chubby chaser? No, I don't think so. <laughs> chubby chasers. No, I tend to have that effect on people. It's the beard. 
Yeah, dude, isn't it hot in the summertime, especially in this weather? Like today, not that I have a lot of hair. I shaved my head today. Like, dude, ain't you hot with that beard on? Shave that thing, man. Dude, what are we talking about? Yes, that's who I'm talking about. We got 12 inches of snow in less than 14 days. Really? That's a lot. We didn't even get 12 inches of snow up here. You guys must have did something wrong to piss off Mother Nature that bad. I would love to be a storm chaser. I don't, I don't know. It's fascinating to watch it. I don't know that I'd want to be in one, but it's fascinating to watch it. I've dealt with Hurricane two years ago. Never again. Yeah, sure that wasn't fun. Yeah, who the hell wants to be, like, in the middle of a storm? Maybe some kooky SOB. I lived in Florida during Hurricane Hugo. That must not have been good. Texas had it worse than us. Yeah, and you guys don't even have snow clouds. <laughs> that's, that's the worst part. Well, Mr. Plumber, I guess you're going to have to hook your GoPro up to your truck and head into a storm. See what it's like. Across the pond from me, Michigan. Snow was so bad, it shut down the U.S. Postal Service. No joke. Well, I'm sure like two inches of snow would have shut the postal surface down there, too. So, that was the reason I enclosed the garage and turned it into a train room. Why? Because you got snow? <laughs> One of these days, you're going to regret not having a garage, especially if you get a lot of snow. You're going to have to build a garage now for your vehicles. Wigwag, you're in Ohio, right? Yeah, Wigwag's in Ohio. There's a lot of Ohio people here. Bitter cold, it got to minus one one night during that time. I don't think it even got that cold up here. See, it's like, it's crazy. You don't know what the weather's going to be like anymore, anywhere. Like, what was isn't anymore. It's like a bizarre world. Not surprised by that, Jason. It happened to us several times in West Virginia. West Virginia is different, man. Like, West Virginia is like, you know it's going to snow. It's just a matter of when. It's coming. <laughs> you just don't know when. You expect it there. You don't expect snow in Arkansas at minus one. You expect stuff like that living in West Virginia, Kyle. It's like, you know, you, you expect storms in living in the middle of the country. Tornadoes, they're coming. It's just part of it. It's like we expect hurricanes here on the East Coast. Sooner or later, they come. You just have a garage 3D printed in your driveway. <laughs> yeah, man, you can 3D print your garage now. Wouldn't that be something, man? That'd be so. You should try printing it, printing up little sections and sticking them together, piece by piece. We normally get ice, not snow. Really? That's crazy. Arkansas is the only state where you can experience four seasons in one week. Don't they say that about Texas? I've tried with little success. I'm definitely a far cry from Reed Timmer. 
uh, predicting the best place to be. Well, you keep it, keep at it, and you'll be okay. Sooner or later, you'll get it, Mr. Palmer. My wife would shoot me if I put my trains in the garage. That's why I took over the basement and cut a hole in the walls to run them through. Yeah, that's... That, <laughs> yeah, you cut your cinder blocks. That's funny. What's up, mailman? Not all the time. There were times when one side of the mountain got snow and the side we live on barely got a dust. Yeah, that happens now with rain. Like, you could be like, it could be raining on this side of the street. I've seen it happen. And not raining on the other side of the street. Yeah, that can happen. But, you know, you live in West Virginia. It's going to snow. It's just, you know, it's going to be cold. You expect those things. Uh, our four seasons, mudslides, fires, earthquakes, and flash floods. Yeah, that's your four seasons, huh? <laughs> that's funny. Not really. When's your mudslide? When's mudslide season? Is that would that be like uh, fall? Can't wait to get back to West Virginia. Where are you, Norman? Norman's in California. Norman's in California. He's in the desert. What's up, John? Is it evening? Yeah, I guess it is. How you doing, Schuylkill River? Soon after the fire season, fall into winter. Fall into winter. Okay. Sent you a couple. Yeah, I've seen them, Jason. <laughs> you got more snow than we did. Better you than me. That's all I got to say. Virginia, wild and wonderful. Yeah, that's for sure. What's going on, Mr. Schuylkill River? I'm doing okay, thanks. <sighs> so we actually have big concrete 3D printers that use the aggregate when you're building the house. Really? They really got those things? 3D concrete printers. I gotta check that out. There's probably some on YouTube videos of that. Are you lying to me, Mr. Plumber? Are you pulling my leg? Eight inches on the first wave. We got four on the second. 2018-2020 snow totals. The less than one inch combined. Yeah, sometimes that happens, you know. Sometimes, you know, we can get, like, there's been years when we've gotten, like, I don't know. I can remember two snowstorms back-to-back. -back. We got 22 inches of snow. Each snowstorm. It was, like, 85, 86 Something like that. And then there's some years where we barely get any snow. So, you know, stuff happens. Yep, Terry, they got videos. You seen this, Pappy? You seen these concrete 3D printers? That's giant 3D printers, industrial size. Get out of here. 13, 16, 4 feet of snow. Uh, Kyle leaving. I'm going to go get some dinner. All right, Kyle. Not sure what I want. Me either, Kyle. Thanks for stopping by. See you, Kyle. See you, Kyle. So Jason never had sushi. Need to try some. Yeah, be careful where you buy sushi. I have to check out these huge, uh, giant 3D printers. I want a competition from NASA. 
they're going to send a big 3D printer ahead of people to pre-print the structures. That's interesting. Not all sushi is created equal, Kyle. It's like flex track. Not all flex track is created equal. Truck, truck shop sushi will kill you. Yeah, for sure. Start off with a California roll. Great for beginners. <laughs> Kyle will be eating sushi from some cheap grocery store and get sick, and then he'll come back and complain to all you guys. Quake in time. Take care. Quit in time. Uh, see you, Jason. Thanks for hanging out, man. Safe trip home. Don't get caught in a snowbank. I'm going to try some, just need to try some new thing. Yeah, make sure you, if you try sushi, you go to like a place that gets it fresh. That's all. It's in and out for me tonight. Is that what you're having, in and out burger? What do you get on that burger? Watch out for the wasabi. Oh, man, the wasabi is the best part. Wasabi is the best part of it. Kyle, go to a proper Japanese restaurant. Yes, exactly. Go to a proper one. Don't go to the McDonald's version of one. Number one place to get sushi. Yeah. Man, the wasabi is the best part of it. That, like, clears your sinuses out. It opens you up. I could go for some right now. It's like good horseradish. Makes you tear, but it like cleans out all your sinuses. It's like little scrubbers in there. There's no sushi at in and out burger though. You chat keeps telling me slow mode is on and to wait 10 seconds before posting. That's what it's doing, Norman. Just don't pile it on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just need a little bit. You don't want a lot. Unless you like it. Two number twos. Hold the tomatoes, grilled onions, extra spread. Hmm. You don't like the tomatoes? Grilled onions. Hmm. Guess it depends. Yeah, grilled is okay. I'm growing some peppers this year called the Mad Haters. I'm excited. They don't sound too promising. Most wasabi is green horseradish. Yeah. But the real wasabi isn't. that Japanese horseradish. That stuff's expensive. I've seen, uh, I seen an episode on YouTube where they were showing you people that grow it. That's hard to grow. And it's really expensive. Real wasabi. 
Wasabi. Some Canadian bacon. That's correct, Martin. It's too expensive otherwise. Say, never had any. Never had any what, Jeffrey? You'd be hungry. Two number twos, huh, Daryl? Well, maybe he's sharing them, Norman. Maybe one's for him and one for his wife. I don't need a burger to eat some Canadian bacon tracks on. <laughs> yes, Norman, very hungry. Well, maybe they're all for him, Norman. Was it two? Is a number two number twos? Is that like a big burger? Bought some horseradish cheese today in Fastoria. Yeah, was it good? I bet that was pretty good. Wasn't hungry until this part of the chat. <laughs> well, you know, it's mind over matter, Mister Palmer. We can start talking about something really bad and nasty, and it'll take your hunger away. Probably would taste really good on some rice and broccoli. Wasabi? Is that what you're talking about, Jeffrey? What about one of their delicious real ice cream shakes? You're going to get an ice cream? You're going to get a milkshake on the side, Daryl? Maybe he is, and he's not telling us, Norman. Because then we'll think, oh, geez, he's having two burgers and a milkshake? What a pig. Are you getting fries, too? No, they're for me. Wife doesn't eat meat. Just me. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet. Still full from lunch. It'll be there when you get done. I bet it's really good. I love horseradish. But see, like, I don't like things like plumbers plant hot peppers. I like jalapenos. They're okay. But, like, habaneros and things like that, nah, they're too hot for me, man. I can't, I can't deal with them. I want no parts of them. They're from beep, 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 beep. I used it for grilled cheese and tomato soup. Oh man, I bet you that was good. Yeah, I've gotten like horseradish cheese, but it was like really mild cheese. It wasn't like really, like, really hot, hot, you know? But it's got a nice taste to it. I, I like it. It's good with like roast beef. Man, that would be good. Some horseradish cheese and roast beef melted in the oven. Woo, buddy. On an onion roll. Now you're talking. Does that make you hungry, plumber? Be really, you are on fire today. No, there, no. Okay. Hey, if you go to in and out you go all out. Double, double, animal style fries and a shake. What is animal style fries? What is that, Norman? Ghost peppers. Yeah, no, 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 I remember when I was delivering to restaurants and uh, Mexicans in there, they'd be like making stuff up for themselves for lunch or for breakfast or they like breakfast mostly. And they, I'd be like, what, what's in there? Is that ghost pep, you know, peppers, hot peppers? I'm like, what kind? Ghost peppers. Want to try them? Like, no way, man. It's like, they're good. They're good. Like, get away from me, man. <laughs> they're not too hot. Like, yeah, right. <laughs> to them, they're probably not hot. But no way, man. I'm out. Habaneros and, like I said, jalapenos is it. Tappy love grilled cheese and tomato soup. Me too. Sounds good. You have cooked with jalapenos to scratch it out. To stretch it out? 
I tried hot peppers by itself and just put it on my tongue and I taste it instantly. Yeah. Yeah, some people, you know, can't take them. I like jarring my own salsa for football season. Yeah. If you're using, like, hot peppers, like ghost peppers and stuff, I ain't eating your salsa. And some, like, I had a friend, one of my customers, he would make, like, um, he was into hot peppers. He loved hot peppers. Anything hot, he would make, like, jalapeno jelly. That was good. And then he'd start, like, you know, he thought it was funny when he'd get you to taste something that was, like, really hot. And... It, like burn your like burn the hair off your back. You know, he thought that was really funny. I didn't think it was so funny. It's best to go shaking for me. Snacking? Go snacking for me. The delicious fries smothered and grilled onions and their special secret hamburger sauce and cheese. That sounds pretty good. Animal style. <laughs> Is that what they call them too? Animal fries? Damn, man, man. It's like heart attacks waiting to happen. Your internet went down? Damn. We missed you. We were talking about you. Tiger style. My brother-in-law made some salsa with Thai scorpion peppers and ghost peppers. It was just as hot going in. Yeah, I bet, man. That's dangerous. Those darn Russians, Wigwag, taking your internet out. That's what they probably did. All right, Pappy. See you, man. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out. Have a good night. 604. I just ate steak and potatoes and green beans and hot peppers. It was a big yellow one. It was so hot. It steamed my glasses. <laughs> was that because it was like hot from the oven hot or Kelvin hot? Making up stories, Norman. No, only black pepper. That's okay. Hoblins with Chef Ramsey is one of the best videos I've ever seen. It was like what they cook with, like, the hottest peppers on the planet. Like, to me, like, I don't know. If it's that hot, like, I can't see how it's enjoyable. I really can't. I don't know. It's like you're just waiting, like, you just want, like, the hottest of hot that you can handle. I don't know. That's crazy. What's up, Dave BNSF? When you have rectal bleeds, you got the rectal bleeds. <laughs> yeah, but man, that's not good either, Norman. Ten hot wings, ten questions to celebrities. It's an interview of its interview, so a celebrity show, but they eat hot wings at the same time. <laughs> Are the hot wings like all different hotnesses? No, Hot Ones is a show where they eat chicken wings. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Still here. Where else would you be? If you weren't here. So, like, are they, like, Super duper hot, or is each one hotter than the last? They get hotter with each wing. 
So it must be like really hard to like answer questions when they get really hot. I can see it now. They're tearing up, <laughs> choking. Hot ones. And that's the name of the show, Hot Ones. That's from a Tim Waite album, Nighthawks at the Diner. Tom White? Tom Waits? Who's he? Has <laughs> anybody ever got to the 10th one and able to answer questions? My two favorite episodes will Bill Barr and Alton Brown. Alton Brown? I don't know who he is. It's a YouTube show. It's a YouTube show? What's the name of this YouTube show? The second Chef Ramsay is my first. What's, what's the name of this YouTube show you're speaking of? Hot Ones. Hot Ones. Is it First We Feast? Is that the name of the show? First We Feast? Chuck Tomway, he's great. Chuck. I like Gordon Ramsay. I can't stand him. He's like obnoxious. <laughs> if you like Chef Ramsay, go on YouTube when this is done. Look up Hot Ones Chef, Chef Ramsay. You will see one of the funniest videos ever. I found, like, First We Feast... My family loves my turkey now after taking pointers from Chef Ramsay. Chris, the hottest pepper. She loves um, calling the pepper man. It's show teaching others to be better chefs. I don't know about that. Maybe he does, but I don't like the way he treats people sometimes. Chris. Spicy wings. Yeah, I just see this one. First we feast. And it seems like all these hot ones. What's up, Cosman? At least you're talking cooking now instead of boring trains. <laughs> yeah, you're right, Cosmo. I'm talking cooking now instead of stupid trains. Stupid trains. Peppers are really hot for you. They literally burn any bugs in your body. Yeah. Along, along with other things. Who's doing live tonight? You. <laughs> you, Daryl. <laughs> uh, nobody that I know of. It's your turn, I think. I think it's your turn, Daryl. I don't see nobody up. Must be you. Uh... Oh, excuse me. Is there a toilet nearby quickly? Do you mind? I've got no, for pit. Hey, Is it nearby? It is right into the green room. Right into the green room. <laughs> He's going to get sick from eating them hot wings. Serves them right. <laughs> and play peppers hey, what's going on, everybody? For it's the first to be feast. I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions, even hotter wings. 
It's a banner day in internet history as we I guess this is it then. Gordon Ramsay. He's one of the world's most decorated and successful chefs with an empire that includes more than a dozen restaurants, countless best-selling cookbooks, and seven Rumble to shows, thumb, thunder. Master Chef Junior, which returns to Fox this February. That's a good one. I like that. Great to see you. So we started Hot Ones about four years ago, and shortly after we put up our first episode, we were bombarded with requests to get Gordon Ramsay on this show. And so they're the going to torture him and punish him. Carol, you change your change your mind again. To my family get togethers. So this one is very just an American for the audience. If you watch his show from overseas, he's much more kind, man. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, I, I, I don't like the fact that you know he sits there and yells at people and like you know belittles them. I don't think that's cool. How's that like? Helping anybody's self esteem. I don't like that part. I'm I'm sure he's a great chef, but I, I don't like that part. Maybe he does better over his European shows. I didn't know that. I thought he was a dick altogether. <laughs> he's just a dick to Americans. <laughs> I'm the chef of the house. He's a five star chef. <laughs> is that the name of the show or is that what you call yourself the chef of the house <laughs> what the heck yeah I know Norman what the heck's up with Daryl he keeps changing his mind when he posts stuff yeah I, th I think this is the show Hot ones. It's 31 minutes. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of good chefs out there. I'm sure he's good, but there's plenty of others too. Yeah, it gets it gets old. It's like show after show, he's like belittling people that are just want to you know be the best that they can be you know you to like I don't maybe it's all just a bullshit act the whole thing but like you know somebody that wants to be a chef and goes to school and tries their hardest to be one and here he is what is this shit you're making and he starts cursing them out what the F is wrong with you <laughs> that's not cool so I, I don't like that part of it. A lot of people probably do. But that's how people are. That's how us Americans are, Norman. We like to see people suffer and do worse than us. <laughs> just how it is. Um, I have four kids. We're savages. They're paying me to come on this. Dad. I want to see how good your palate is or how strong your palate is. You've got a big mouth. Uh, you shout and scream all day long, but can you take a hot wing? So finally, under... So this is going to shut them up. And a lot of supporters out there, I'm here. The world has pressured us into this room. Oh, that is it. If it all goes tits up after this, it doesn't matter. We may be hot ones, okay? I'd rather have a bottle in front of me than a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> I never heard of this, dude. Maybe I have, and I just don't know it. Yeah, that's what's crazy, man. There's, like, all these hot sauces. There's probably, like, millions of hot sauces out there. And each one wants to get hotter than the next. Like, who wants to torture themselves that bad? Seriously. Some of them are bad. Like, I've seen some people, like, really get, like, couldn't breathe and it's a bit overcooked. <laughs> He's going to pay for this. Yeah. I do the cooking in my house, but that was a response to derail. Daryl's really coming. What's up, Rick Bailey? When you think back and all the times you've been wowed by the raw talent of a child on the show, is there a story that stands out? I think of some of the earlier kids now, back in season one. 
you know, those 18, 19 year olds. Um, Alexander from season one, you know, this guy is a prolific chef. He's barely 19 years of age. And for the last five years, he spent weekends, and holidays in some of the most amazing restaurants across the world. So I say to them, no mom, no dad, no school teacher. You can love me, you hate me. It's going to be the best football coach you've ever met in your life. But you'll come out of this a much better cook. And they do. What's been the most disturbing thing that you've ever seen unnoticed or uncared for at a restaurant on Kitchen Nightmares? Uh, that's a really good question. So, um, so G to Strasbourg yesterday, and never saw him so happy. Sauce, really? Sauce, sauce, sauce. Did you get video you know, of him so happy? No Come on, man. He couldn't have been sauce happier sauce than when he's watching my videos. That was off three years ago. Several Stuart Littles spotting in the corner of the kitchen. Yeah, big motherfuckers. Like cats. <laughs> I didn't know they only had cats. They didn't. It was a, it was a fucking rat. Yeah, pretty shocking. Uh, from rats to mold uh, to recently. Um, <laughs> Stuart Little. Some sauce is meant for cooking, natural. large Come meals for events and such. Even, even then, the you use a small That's meal. People use it in small meals. Cooking yeah, is. I mean, people, I yes. think, I, I think it's like anything else. It's like the shock factor. You know, they want to see you, like, turn red, have tears, and it's like, it's, it's good then, right? It's all it's all just about, like, You're shocking. You're a chef it. who's famous and has this large... Oh, my God, that's the hottest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, because it was supposed to be put in 100 gallons of uh, Creole, not one. <laughs> uh, yeah, got some video. That's cool. I bought last scene's hot ones lineup. The family and I went through the gambit of hot sauces. So, like, you can buy all these different sauces. Yeah, I have no doubt that he's a good chef, a good, you know, knows what he's doing. And I'm sure he's, you know, it's all just a sort of an act. He likes to be a, a D-I-C-K. <laughs> At Christmas parties, um, as a plumber was at the Buffalo Wing factory. There would be a pot every year. Whoever could eat the 12 hottest wings gets the money. So, like, are their wings really hot? Like, but, like, I'm asking you, you probably, you know, probably not the best judge of your hotness. <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, we're watching a reaction video all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm watching this because now I want to see what it's like. It's more talking than eating. Sounds like a good time, plumber. <laughs> Daryl, do you like hot things? Do you like hot, hot sauces and stuff like that? So who won the money, plumber? Not you, I suppose. So far, this dude's only ate one wing. Or maybe two. I'm sure sometimes like that Scoville count. Sometimes I've ate jalapenos that weren't hot at all. So I don't think it's like, I don't know. Sometimes you can get a pepper that's a dud.
Goval 25,000. I got lower this. These damn trains are so loud. I don't know if 25,000 is hot, but he's not too impressed by it. I would have eight, nine, or ten wings, I know. We're like, you know, eight minutes into the show, and he's on his third one. But I guess it's got to last. You can buy all the sauces. We were sweating at the end, but laughing, having a good time. So, like, the hottest one you had, was it, like, really hot? Did it, like, make you sick? Oh, here's the here's the big thing, right? Like, the hottest one you, that you've got so far, do you still use it? <laughs> That's the thing. Do you still use it? Yeah, but not scorching hot. You know, if it's so hot, you only used it once, then you know it's hot. <laughs> Damn, you put a whole stick of butter in the pan with a burger. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't try the bomb. <laughs> Don't try the bomb, huh, Daryl? Damn, he's up to 36,000 now. It's out of date, he said. <laughs> They're giving him old sauce. Get hotter now. You have to sign in a wave from a waiver form. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Flatlined. What flatline, Norman? You? No, I never won the money. <laughs> Yeah, we figured that, Daryl. You're lightweight. You're like me. Can't handle the hot stuff. It is an interview show. Yeah, I know. I guess I just want to see the end and see. See him sweating bullets and like so hot that he wants to puke. I'm not a big KFC guy, but about 10 years ago, they bought out some hot chicken wings. I got addicted. They had a glaze on them. I kind of remember them. They were pretty good. Aren't they like honey barbecue, zesty honey wings or something? They were pretty good. I love KFC. KFC rocks. I did the Quaker Steak and Lube Challenge and beat it. What is that? Quaker Steak and Lube? What is that? You making things up? Wigwag. Yeah, Wigwag. What is that? What's up, Leslie? How are you? Good evening. 
Sixty-one thousand. This is twice as hot as the last one. That's hot, he says. <laughs> but he's going back for more. He hasn't went for the milk yet. Or the water. Oh, yeah, he has drank some water. He's drinking water off, off camera. It's a restaurant. They had a hot wing challenge. Oh, okay. Quaker Steak and Lube. That's a pretty cool name. Are they still in business? That's a pretty neat name. So did oh you beat you beat it? Well, we don't know how hot they were though, Stephen. He said that's hot. Now he's drinking the milk. He's only on his like fifth or sixth wing. Dang, he's going to die when he gets to the 10th one. <laughs> this is going to be good. I always have. <laughs> Here, I'll put the link in case anybody want to watch this. You can watch it later. Damn, he's at 116 now. Oh, man. He's going to be bad shape now. Yeah, it's like, man, you got to hate yourself to keep eating this stuff. Like, it's like torture. Yeah, man, he's turning red. He's choking. <laughs> Like, this is like torture. It's like, why would you want to do this? What's enjoyable about this? <laughs> oh, my God. It's late, but I thought I'd look in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm just watching this show now that the guys were talking about. It's funny. <laughs> Just wait to the last. <laughs> oh, man. It's got to be bad. I mean, like, we started at, like, 2,000 Scoville, and now we're, like, up to 100 and something. It's a good thing you're only eating one. That's the one we way. Uh, he will be crying the next morning. He's this guy. He's he's checking his shorts now. What are you talking about, Norman? <laughs> He thinks he's throwing flames at the other end. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't understand why you would want to torture yourself this bad. When I have food, I want to, like, enjoy it. I don't want to, like, torture myself. I see him and God Fieri don't get along too well. You like it, huh, Stephen? Uh, I guess everybody likes. So you like torturing yourself, is what you're saying. Why don't you just stick needles in your eyes? I wonder if they're required to wear diapers during the show. Yeah, like, I mean, like, 
you know, if your stomach gets something that it doesn't have, man, it's going to do whatever it wants to do. He can't even chew it, man. It's so hot. He, he oh my god. <laughs> He's like killing taste buds, man. Nobody likes Guy Fieri. He's a tool. Well, I don't. I don't really watch. Chefs, he's he's drinking Pepto Bismol. <laughs> this is funny, man. He's drinking Pepto Bismol, really. He downed the whole thing, he took the whole bottle. Oh my god. This is crazy. Be right back. Checking on it. Yeah, how's she doing? Let us know how she's doing when she comes back. Sounds like when I had chili dish in Singapore, it was the bowl of dry fried chilies. Was it really hot, Les? Les, do you like hot things? Do you like hot foods? He's like crying, man. See, like, that's bad, man. Like, I don't want to, like, oh, man, that's crazy when you torture yourself that bad. <laughs> he is funny, though. I got to give him that much. My math was numb at the first mouthful. So did you keep eating it, though? Lost internet for a minute or two. Okay. Sushi croissant. Sushi donuts. Yeah, I agree with them. Wow, man, he's like pouring lime all over his tongue. <laughs> it's rubbing it on his butt. <laughs> this is a funny episode, man. You guys got to watch this later. Digger, you're back. <laughs> you got to watch this episode, man. You'll laugh. <laughs> it's funny. I got to watch it when I can turn the sound up. He's not even done yet. Just two, more to go. two more to go. Oh my God, man. This dude's going to need 911. Ate a lot, and that was just a starter. No kidding, Les. Wow. Hopefully, you were able to finish the rest of your meal, Leslie. <laughs> wow. 679,000 Skullville. I don't know how donuts are going to help them with this heat. But. I said, like, the, the, the sweet cuts the heat. I don't know. I can't believe this, man. He's still complaining about that heat. <laughs> this show is funny, man. I got to watch the other ones. 
milk. Yes, the best to reduce pain. He's drank milk, Pepto Bismol. Now he's eating donuts. He drank a whole bottle of Pepto Bismol. Well, I bet he had a fire in the toilet. He's not even done. He's got two more to go. He's on 679,000, and he can't even finish it. <laughs> He's going to die, man. Like, that's, that's bad, man. And how can you answer these questions when your mouth's on fire? The biggest stuff he brings is better than anybody else to that show. <laughs> He's drinking lime juice. It's funny, but it's not funny, man. So, Plumber, you watch this show a lot, right? Do the hot sauces change every show? Or do they use the same ones every show? Yeah, it's a shame, man. But he signed up for this show. So I wouldn't be this stupid. <laughs> I'd be like, eh, I'm done with ones. <laughs> that was odd enough. There's no shame in saying I can't finish. What's up, John? 2618. How you doing? What's going on? I'm watching Hot Ones with Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Just chilling, huh? You ever watch Hot Ones, John? Where they eat hot wings, eat 10 hot wings, different hotness. Two million Scoville. F you. Two million scoville. He's gonna puke. So plumber, do they change or do are they the same every show? Same hot sauces every show. Sarah Evans, the guy doing the interview. Sean Evans eats the wings every time. Yeah, he's probably immune to it. Steve O from Jackass top it all. Put the hot sauce on his eyeballs. What? Are you kidding me? He's a stupid ass. <laughs> I see the thumbnails. I see the YouTube thumbnails, I think. Oh, okay. Hot ones? Yeah. He's going to go throw up, I think. Yeah. 
That guy's breath is going to make us so jealous. <laughs> uh, what's for dinner, John? Twenty six eighteen. What time is it over there? Six. This is like twelve o'clock in the afternoon. I don't know. How many hours different is it in Alaska? Oh God, Daryl, I forgot about that one. You are correct. Almost all the interviews are good because. They're eating the hot wings, but that's another great one. So you watch this too, Daryl, huh? He's going to use a whole tube of toothpaste just to make his breath smell better. I doubt it. 244. Three, four, five, six. Four hours difference, that's all? Okay. So it's lunchtime, huh? What are you having for lunch? Sockeye tuna? Sockeye salmon? Uh, okay, I'm going to hit the sack. Good night, guys. Good night, Digger Evans. It's only 644, Digger. You're a sissy. Sleep well. Thanks for hanging out. Leslie's up later than you, Digger. You should be ashamed of yourself. Donut. Yeah. And he squirts up his ass as well. Get out of here, man. Really? He's a goofball, that dude. <laughs> that dude. That dude is a goofball. Well, we'll get dinner soon. Sleep is all messed up with being out. Being light out all the time. So it's light 24 hours? How many more days are you there for, man? <laughs> that was funny, man. <laughs> that was funny, Palmer. Thanks for telling me about this show. Shame on you, big boy. <laughs> That's funny, man. Well, this video's got over 106 million views. 106 million views. Holy crap. Man, oh man. That's crazy. Eh. I got to watch it again so I can hear him really talking. Alaska is cool. Yeah. Basically the 20th we leave. Oh, my God, man. You got to put up with this crap for five more days. Good luck, my friend. They changed the lineup each season. Oh, the hot sauce lineup? I have to watch it. I have to watch some more of them. <laughs> that was good, man. <laughs> it's got a lot of viewers, that's for sure. Yeah, nobody else is live, Daryl. 
It's your turn now. You want to go live? It's your turn, Daryl. John 2618, any gold panning while you're up there? Yeah, you're going to go look for gold, John? I'd be looking for gold every day. I would have to pan some gold if I was in Alaska. Me too, Plumber. I'm sure I could find one. Sounds like he's not going to do it, Daryl. been going here two and a half hours all right man so you know what that means it's your turn daryl or somebody else somebody else go live now go into a hobby shop in a little bit huh i'm sure everything's expensive up there man you go in the store there cheerios a box of cheerios is like 12 bucks I can't imagine what an HO boxcar would be. Something to do. Yeah, I guess so. Stomping on roaches is something to do, too. <laughs> it's got to be other stuff to do, isn't there? To go fishing or something. Go caribou hunting or something like that. All right. I'm going to go get something to eat. Hey, James Galton. Just in time for me to say, see you later. <laughs> Maybe one of the James Galton wants you go live. Maybe somebody else will go live and y'all can we can hang out there <laughs> what's up james how you doing tsg is live at 4 p.m west coast time see you jerry bye guys all right norman see ya man have a good night here you go tsg is live go watch tsg now all right folks y'all have a good night who did a test today live oh that's cool. I missed it. Hope it went well. All right, folks. I'm out. Not as expensive as Nome, Alaska. Yeah, I'm sure the further up you go, the more expensive stuff is. All right, man. TSG Multimedia, if you want to go check out a live stream. Uh, if not, I don't know what to tell you. Go watch some hot ones or something. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. Thanks for hanging out. See you. Peace.